Hi and welcome to Call Your Damn Jets. Um, what I want to do today is adjust my collar. Nah. <laughs> uh, what I want to do today is um, react to an article I've read in the New York Times called When Three Shots Are Not Enough. It was written by Amanda Morris and was published on January 3rd, 2022. Um, there's there's a bunch of stuff to say about that article. Um, first of all, I, I would say the New York Times um, has uh, published very uneven articles uh, during the past few years, and I don't know when it started, but uh, I've noticed the articles were super um, uneven. Sometimes they produce superb stories that are well-researched and that are right on the money, and that's surrounded by a bunch of bad articles that either do not understand the, the problem that they're talking about or will explain the problem in seemingly in a seemingly intelligent fashion, but it ends up not being right. Um, and for instance, I mean, I have other sources than the New York Times uh, to to read for my news. I read the uh, Mike Masnick at Tech Dirt, for instance, or Eugene Volok at the Volok Conspiracy, and they typically will give you an interpretation of some legal problem that is sound. Um, and then you go read about the same thing in the New York Times, and it's complete nonsense. In this case, the story that I'm talking about, when three shots are not enough, um, it's, um, I would say it's not complete trash, but there are parts of it that are very problematic and uh, tend towards the trashy. Um, First of all, I want to say that I've read the article and I read all the names and everybody was was involved in the article. Everybody's been interviewed, and I do not blame any of the patients in the article for having uh, pursued uh, getting more shots uh, than um, the FDA ha had approved or the CDC had approved at the time. Uh, so yeah, basically the article is about you know how people have been getting more shots than what the FDA or the CDC approved, and I do not blame any of them. Um, all of them have some form of immuno. Uh, I'm not sure how the what the word is. They're immunocompromised. All of them are immunocompromised in some fashion. Um, and the reason I've read it and the reason I'm responding to it is that I'm also immunocompromised. I had chemo last year, and I had a stem cell transplant in June, and I'm about six months out of the transplant, and I've asked my oncologist, and he said, you're going to be immunocompromised for two years after the transplant. I think it's a rule of thumb. I don't know that they can... I don't, there's no test. There's no way they cannot come and just give me a test and say, yay, you are, no, you are not. Um, but after a stem cell transplant, you consider the immunocompromised for two years. And I noticed the CDC does the same thing. It's like if you read the, the guidelines for immunocompromised people, they say, who can get this thing if you're immunocompromised? Somebody who has had a, who, somebody who's within two years of a stem cell transplant. Um, so I don't blame anyone uh, for wanting uh, good health. <laughs> um, And so the article says, well, you know, look at those people. They had to get those shots um, that were not authorized at the time by the CDC or, or the FDA. Now they've been authorized. In some cases, they've gotten four or five shots. This is definitely not authorized even now. Um, but I don't blame them. Um, there's a little bit in the article of uh, recognition that the FDA and the CDC, they, are, they set up guidelines 
And sometimes the doctors have to draw outside the lines a little bit. And it happens. Uh, even for things like... Uh, I don't remember the name of that damn drug, but uh, Resendivir, for instance. Um, I guess there were at some point some doctors who were prescribing it under the notion that it would help treat COVID. Uh, there's good evidence now that it doesn't. But there was at some point the CDC and the FDA were not recommending it. But at the same time, they didn't go after doctors who were using it because they had to figure out whether it was working or not. Uh, same thing for, um, I think it's hydrochloroquine or whatever. It's the same thing. You, you try it, and then if it doesn't work, then you, you, stop, you stop using it. Um, and in my mind is the same thing with the vaccines that you have special cases. The CDC and the FDA are relatively good at establishing broad guidelines for the general population. But then you have those people who are immunocompromised like myself who don't fit the standard model. And I think it, it I find it absolutely fine that doctors uh, in a lot of cases will say, well, you know, you've had two shots, uh, we don't see an antibody response, let's try for another shot and see what happens. And actually, in the article, they've uh, mentioned how, in some cases, the people who did that then became data for for the studies that prove to the, to the, the government that uh, immunocompromised people should be getting more shots. Um, yeah, and I have a note here that the FDA and the CDC did not respond <laughs> to the, the journalist. Um, I'm not surprised uh, because I'm going to argue that the CDC's messaging in particular was not clear. Um, and I, I, I'm disappointed, I'm certainly disappointed in the CDC since the start of the pandemic, that they've been saying one thing, another thing, another thing, another thing, and it's they're very careless, and they confuse people, and they confuse even doctors. And here's why I'm saying that they're confusing doctors. Um, I told you I'm immunocompromised, and let's look at the page of the CDC, the COVID page for immunocompromised people. Um, there it is. Um, yeah, that's COVID-19 vaccines for moderately or severely immunocompromised people. And then there's a bunch of you know in, information. And one distinction that they make, um, and you can see it more down here, is the distinction between an additional primary shot and a booster shot. They're not the same. The additional primary shot, or just the primary shot in general, it's the primary shot. Let me go back to uh, to my mail app and come back on the screen. I don't like that big there. Uh, the primary shot is the like if you if you needed to have a series of shots when you took your vaccine because you had the Moderna and the Pfizer, is the two first shots. Or if you have, if you got the Johnson and Johnson, is the the single shot that you got the first time. It's a primary shot, and then you have booster shots. The primary shots and the booster shots are not the same thing. Um, let's make that very clear. A booster shot is still the vaccine, but it is a lesser dose than the primary shot. And what the CDC is saying, I'm going to bring that back on the screen. What the CDC is saying is you have the additional primary shot here for people who are, if you're, for people who are immunocompromised, you're eligible for an additional primary shot if you are over 12 and blah, blah, blah. So I am one of those persons. I receive Pfizer. Um, the Pfizer vaccine at first, and I, I should be able to get an additional primary shot. And, and now is, here's the thing. 
it's uh, when I talked to my doctors, when I talked to my nurses, when I talked to everyone, they were not talking about the additional primary shot. They were all saying booster shot. So I got the booster shot, exactly the same as my wife, and my wife doesn't have cancer. So I got the booster shot. Uh, and even the pharmacist, we went to a pharmacy not far from here, and I, we went to, together, my wife and I, and I told the pharmacist, I have cancer. It didn't change anything. She gave me a booster shot. She didn't give me the full shot. And then afterwards, I went to the CDC website, and I saw that. So there are people like myself or maybe some of the folks in the article that the, uh, that the New York Times produced that are getting the wrong thing. They're getting a booster shot when they should be getting an additional primary shot. And the additional primary shot is the same dosage as the other primary shots. Um, and I wonder how some of them were, were handled. The, the article doesn't make the distinction between the two. It makes the same mistake that my oncologists make made and by oncologists i mean like i had a, i had an oncologist at umc i had an oncologist at johns hopkins and they were all confused about that until the oncologist i have now at johns hopkins who's taking care of me long term talked to an um, infectious disease specialist which is his colleague and asked about it and then the infectious disease specialist said oh yeah i should have gotten a full shot not just a booster shot so the, the New York Times articles repeats that confusion, which originated with the CDC, uh, because everybody thought I was getting a booster shot, even I, and it's only afterwards that I discovered that it was I should have gotten a primary shot. And I asked my oncologist to try to, you know, what can we do to fix this? Now, it's possible. Today, I, I had a, an antibody test, and we're going to see if I have antibodies. If I do have antibodies, then I think my oncologist is going to say, well, you, we should, you know, we're just going to wait until the CDC We're probably going to have a four shot. Then we're going to wait until the CDC says, give them a four, a four shot, a four shot and, and so on and so forth. And there's another product on the market that I'm going to try to talk about a little bit later that I might want to use, but basically let's not try to fix the fact that you got the booster shot. You have antibodies, so you're protected. Um, but it's very possible that the antibody test that I took today is going to reveal that I don't have antibodies. And now going forward, I'm going to have to break the rules because I already got the three shots. One of the shots was a booster shot that I shouldn't have gotten. But the only way to fix that is to get the fourth shot, which the FDA, uh, not the FDA, the, well, the FDA, I don't know who exactly has authority over this, the FDA or the CDC, a fourth shot that is not officially authorized. Uh, that would be the way to, f to fix the problem right now. Um, So yeah, I'm probably going. I, you know, I may have to break the rules. And they were talking in the article about how the government, um, you know, have established rules and then and then, but they're not probably not going to sue and stuff like that. Uh, I'm telling you right now, if you are a patient and somebody tries to sue you because you got more shots than you should have, make a fuss <laughs> because I think that's utterly stupid and should. And if somebody decides to go the legal route, they should go to court and be around soundly defeated. Um, this is stupid. Uh, so if you are a patient and you get sued for that, tell, tell us, and, uh, and we're gonna we're gonna do something about it, uh, so that uh, you're not uh, you know left to your own devices uh, facing the government. I, I very much doubt that they're going to sue anyone. But to me, the, the source of the problem is the CDC messaging, which is confused 
Uh, they say, yeah, immunocompromised people should get a booster shot. No, it's not a booster shot. It's a primary shot. It's not the same thing. Um, and I mentioned earlier, there's a product that they make especially for immunocompromised people like myself. I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Um, it's called... Um, no, Evusheld, 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 I don't know how to pronounce it. It's E-V-U-S-H-E-L-D. Uh, and the article does mention that there's a product for us, but it doesn't say the, it doesn't tell the name. It's called Evusheld or Evusheld. And uh, I was able to find uh, in a post on Reddit, somebody gave a link to a database of the government and... Um, Johns Hopkins has uh, ordered some that they should have received on Friday. It's funny because on Friday morning I got a, um, a text, I think, or maybe it was, I mean, I don't remember, from my oncologist saying, oh, you inquired about this, about the shield, but we think it's going to take a little bit before we can give it to you because we haven't received it yet. But in the database they were saying that Johns Hopkins should be receiving past Friday. So I guess my oncologist wrote in the morning and in the afternoon they might have received the first shipment. Um, that's the, the Evershell drug is a monoclonal antibody, a cocktail of two monoclonal antibodies that are given simultaneously to patients. And um, apparently they're doing a great job for people that are immunocompromised. Um, And so Johns Hopkins ha will get some, and probably what is going to happen is a little bit like they did with the vaccine. At first, the vaccine was ra rationed because not everybody got access to it uh, immediately. Um, so they were prioritizing it for people that are more at risk. They're probably going to do the same thing with if you shelled. And um, the other thing is that if there are more people at the same level of risk, then there are vaccines that are going to have a lottery. Um, and that's how I got my va my first shot of vaccine. Basically, uh, at some point, my number was called, and they told me how to set up an appointment. And that's probably what's going to happen with the Evershell uh, drug. And... So, you know, that, that, that's the story. And, and in conclusion, uh, I like just to quote, a, I'm taking this quote directly from the article. And it's Dr. Uh, Dori Segev, I'm maybe mispronouncing the name, I'm very sorry, who said, um, about, the pe who said about the people who, who had multiple shots and, and broke the rules he said, rather than shame on them, I would say shame on the system we created. And I agree with that. Uh, the system to deal with COVID and immunocompromised people is messy. It's not clear. The messaging from the CDC has been all over the map. And I think there's messaging in general about masks, for instance, has been all over the map. And then they wonder why people don't want to wear masks. If you're muddy in your message, don't be surprised when people don't do what you want them to do. Um, so yeah, that was, uh, let me tell, give you again the, the coordinates of the article. It's when three shots are not enough by Amanda Morris in the New York Times, January 3rd, 2022. Um, and I think the CDC should have been taken more to task in that article about messaging. They're not doing a good job. Uh, so you can always leave comments if you agree, disagree, uh, want to run up the wall, <laughs> um, thumb up, thumbs down, if you, depending on how much you like this. Um, Subscribe. Um, 
in particular if you have um, cancer yourself um, once I get enough subscribers YouTube is gonna start monetizing my channel and then there may be ways for me to um, have uh, charity drives um, And that's it. So um, thank you very much for listening, and I'll see you next time.